to Wildwood Cottage and welcome back to Wales. It's lovely to have you here. Hope you're all doing well and I hope you're having a good week. Well, it's a very exciting day today. I'm going to start my seeds. I showed you in the last earlier on um, the seeds that I'm thinking of sowing and uh, I thought that I'd get on and get them sown and uh, show you the seeds that I'm going to do today. Because it's February, uh, it's the second week in February and we haven't had any frost for a while. It's quite mild here at the moment. It's getting up to about 10, 12 degrees. Um, so yeah, it's a good opportunity to get some seeds sown and get a head start on the season. So I did show you a few of the things that I was going to be sowing. And uh, I'm just going to get my trays sorted out. Just going to get my bits sorted out. And uh, we'll get on with some seed sowing. I've got the girls in the polytunnel with me today. They're having a good scratch, making a lot of mess. Um, I've given them some bread and they're quite happy with the bread today so yeah I think a couple of them I've got a bit of a sinus infection we've been cooped up for a long time with all the weather that we've had so I've brought them into the polytunnel to give them a bit of a break and uh, to try and sort out their sinus infection I've done a video for you um, I did it last year earlier in the year about how to clear up a sinus infection in chickens so I'm going to post that in my next video show you that and uh, you can see how you can clear up a sinus infection of your chickens if you're thinking of adding chickens to your victory garden they're a great asset to a victory garden because they can scratch all the soil get rid of all your grubs i have to be careful here because i have a fox i also have a stoat so i have to be extra careful and extra vigilant there's also birds of prey around here pine martins uh, pole cats so there's a lot of things that can get hold of my chickens so I'm going to build them chicken tunnels and I think that's going to help in that aspect but uh, while I'm in here they can be in here with me and they can get on with some gardening for me scratch the soil around loosen it all up and then I can get on with my raised beds and uh, the soil will be nice and loose at the bottom ready for the vegetables to go in so it is a little bit cool in the polytunnel because I've got a gauze vent here in my door and one down the door on the other end and there's a bit of a cross draft going on so if you see my hair blowing that's why i've turned off the wind noise so hopefully it's going to be no wind noise um, and we're going to get on with the video and i'll show you what i'm going to be sewing okay so i don't know if anyone's interested but uh when i take my artichokes out i'm thinking of selling some of the tubers because they are organic they're a really old um, heritage tuber because old Gordon grew them here for 50 years and he always replanted his uh, tubers every year so they've always been here as long as he's been here 50 years and he maybe got them and inherited them from somebody else because um, he was that <coughs> he was that kind of old man really and um, he definitely lived in the war the more I think about him and the more I think about what I'm doing here now he just lived as if he was still in the war, he never changed. That was just his way of living. So if any of you are interested, I'm thinking of selling some of my plants out of my garden when I do cuttings because I've got lots that need dividing. Um, they're all grown organically. You've seen on my videos how I grow them. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be soil association registered or anything, simply just me emptying my garden. And rather than me put them on eBay, I'd rather sell them to you lovely people. Unfortunately, it will only be to people within the United Kingdom. I can't send them abroad and I can't send them into Southern Ireland um, due to the rules since Brexit. So I'm going to be putting some comfrey in because I've got that in my garden. It's not the spreading type. Um, is it Bocking 11, I think they call it? Um, or Blocking 11, something like that. But it doesn't spread. It's a very good plant, it's very good for your soil, it's very good for your garden. So I'll be selling some cuttings of that as well, because I've got quite a bit of that in my garden. And uh, maybe some of the flowers as well. So as I say, as I see things that um, I want to move on, should we say, um, I'll let you know and I'll pop them in my Kofi shop. And then if you are interested in anything out of my garden and having some Wildwood Cottage Diary, <coughs> in your garden then let me know they will just be cuttings probably uh, bare root cuttings they won't be in pots because i don't want to use plastic and uh, yeah they will just be nice plants for you to have in your garden as well i've got some lovely things 
um, but they do need to be moved on, they're taking up space. So that's just a thought, let me know in the comments section below if it's something you'd be interested in. But I will definitely be putting Comfrey up for sale, and I will definitely, definitely be putting some artichokes for sale. There'll just be a few tubers, um, and yeah, you can plop them in your own garden, and then you'll always have tubers yourself. I bought my onions the other day. Now these are just um, interim onions until the farmers mark get their supplies in because they haven't got any yet and I always get them from them because they're nice big bulbs of onions now last year the mice set the lot so <coughs> excuse me I've been using um olive oil on the chickens but because uh, I couldn't find this I've got red onions red baron I've got um stud garter which is a good sturdy variety for colder weather colder climate colder climates and they're actually really good bulbs. They were 99p in home bargain. Now I'm not sure how many you get. You get 150 grams. You only get about 20 or 30 bulbs. But they're actually really decent sized bulbs. I've also got these. This one which is sprouting at the top. So yeah I'm just checking the chickens. Sorry I'm just making sure they're okay. Because Gertie's not been very well. She's still not well. I've tried sorting her out with that Veterex stuff. And then I lost it, so I didn't do it, and I thought she was getting better. But she's still struggling a bit, so she's had some alba soil, just to say. Trying to encourage her to drink the water, to put a little tiny bit of chamomile tea in. And I think the antibacterial in that, and the antifungal, might give her a perk up and... Uh, get her eating again so they did have apple cider vinegar and that didn't seem to be doing anything but uh, she's just had a good slug of uh, water with chamomile in it so hopefully she'll be all right anywho i've also got these red ones now these are even better look at the size of that so what i thought i'd do was do what i did last year and start them off in pots um, i found some leeks the other day they're doing really well um, so I'm going to put the onions in. I've also got some seeds off my brother, which I tried to rescue from the mouse. He's been getting in the cupboard. He ate our biscuits. He tried to get into our chocolate tin, which we got for Christmas. And uh, the cheeky little bite, biter ate all the inside of the biscuit and left the outside edge. Can't get rid of them. Anyway, I've got this packet of seeds here. I'm going to start the cucumbers. In fact, I'm going to start all of it because it's got little gem, tomatoes, rocket, cucumber and spring onions. So I think I'm going to do all of them. I've got some more broad beans, which is good because the ones that I've got, I haven't got that many. So I'll be able to do a lot more with these. Um, I've got a herb collection and this one's got dill, sage, sweet basil, sweet margarine and thyme in it. I've got these climbing French beans and I like climbing French beans. They're really good because you can put them in salt water or brine and bottle them and keep them for the winter. So I've got those. I've got some all year round cauliflower. Now the great thing I like about these, <coughs> excuse me, these all year round is that you can pick them small. You don't have to grow them to full size. You buy the little tiny uh, ones from Sutton's or Thompson and Morgan and places like that and they're like £2.49 a packet for the seeds you can just grow these all year round as it says in the name and you can start them and harvest them early and start harvest them as young heads and maybe just roast them in the oven as they are and um, with a bit of a sauce over the top I've got a wartime recipe for doing that of making it into like um, a roast so I'm going to try that so that's those I don't know where he got these Carter's seeds from. I'm not sure if they were a um, pound shop or somewhere like that. But yeah, Carter's. I've also got some spring onions. I've got some autumn sprouting broccoli. Now the great thing with these green ones is that when you pick the big head in the middle, you can leave them um, and they'll do the uh, sprouts out of the shoots. So you can grow them like purple sprouting broccoli and just pick the green shoots and leave them in the ground for the winter. I've done that a few times and I've had some lovely sprigs off them. Um, sorry, I'm just checking the chickens again. Yeah, I've had some lovely green shoots that come off the stem and then you can pick them, put them in some butter and uh, cook them in the oven. And they're lovely, really, really tasty. 
I've got some sweet bell peppers which I wanted, I needed them so I'm happy about that. I've got some globe beetroot, got some all year round lettuce again, does exactly what it says on the tin. You can plant it all year and harvest it all year, especially if you've got a polytunnel. Um, but you could put them in a pot and keep them in a porch over the winter, just the same as you would in a polytunnel. And you could probably grow them in a window box and just eat the outside leaves and just leave them to keep growing from the inside and keep picking the outside leaves. And you won't have to have a lot of space to be able to grow them. And you get a lot of money then out of your packet of seeds. So that's that. Brussels sprouts, I needed Brussels sprouts. I wanted to grow them last year and the year before, but I could only get the red ones and I wanted the green ones because this is a good wartime food. Um, full of iron, full of vitamins, full of minerals. If you pick them young, they don't taste bitter. Um, so yeah, they're a good versatile food. You can put them with your Christmas dinner, but not only that, you can serve them any time. You can pick the um, little outside leaves off instead of throwing them away and cook them like you would a cabbage and then serve that on the plate. So yeah, they're a really good vegetable. You can also eat the leaves. They don't have to throw the leaves away. The whole plant is edible. So you get a lot of bang for your buck with a, uh, a Brussels sprout. And the other thing I've got is cabbage. Now I tried to get some cabbage online this morning. Couldn't get any. So these are going to be great. Um, they're Golden Acre Primo. I believe that Golden Acre Primo is an organic variety, it's not a hybrid. So I'm going to try growing one just for the seeds and see if I can regrow the seeds next year. Um, because I've done that with the Russian kale, so I'm hoping I'll be able to do that with these. Um, so yeah, that's the seeds that I'm going to sow, get them growing in the uh, house, get them started. And then what I want to do then is take my seeds in and see if there's anything I really need to get that I haven't got. Because I have boxes of seeds that really need to be used up. I don't want to waste them. So I might grow them as uh, young shoots and just sow the whole packet of seed, an old packet, and see what comes up. And see if I can get some uh, nice young shoots to be able to put in a salad. So that's that. And the other thing is, which is really exciting, which means we can get on with the Victory Garden, is my new handle arrived for my mattock. I broke two. But this is beach, apparently. It looks like I need to put some oil on it because it is just a bare beach handle. But it now means that I can get stuck into the side of the polytunnel here where all the brambles and everything are that I didn't get finished last year. And we can now get stuck into the victory garden and get the ground sorted and new pneumatic. So, of course, I'd show you, you're putting it together so you know how they go together. So you've got on the on a mattock handle, pickaxe handle, you've got a wide head here and a narrow head at the bottom here. And your mattock has a funny shape. It's narrower at the bottom there and wider at the top. Now that is good simply because it means the pole will stay on without any nails, without any screws. So you turn your head up, you pop the handle through and you let it drop. There you go. So what I need to do now is I need to take that out into the garden and go and give it a smack with the lump hammer and then that is good to go. That's all you do. No faffing nothing but you can often pick these heads up really really cheap you can often get them at farmers markets, second hand shops markets people selling them on facebook because they don't know what they are they don't know how to use them the handle was eight pound um on ebay for a solid beach handle i think as i say i need to put some oil on it to make sure that it weathers well and remember to bring it in out of the rain so now we can get on with our victory garden and get digging the garden, get the strawberries out, get everything sorted and get a shufty on. Yeah, I've been having a look around the polytunnel at things that I didn't plant last year. And um, I've been looking to see if I can find things that I can plant. And I found this bag of potatoes I bought last year that I didn't get round to doing anything with. And they're called Estima Second Early. And it says they're suitable for mashing, boiling and baking. And they're a two kilogram bag and they're second dailies. Now, 
I looked at them and I thought, oh, there's nothing, I can't use them, they're no good. But the more I've looked at them, excuse a sec. The more I've looked at them, the more I've seen that these green shoots here. Now these would be the eyes on the potato that would come out of the potato and the potato rots and you're left with these eyes and these eyes are what produce the plant that produces the new potatoes not the actual potato so my plants have got these eyes on them as you can see this one's attached to the potato here i've got some that aren't attached like this one but they get that's got eyes on it as well so what i thought was instead of throwing it away because this one's looking pretty dead, but it's got some lovely green shoots on it. So I think I'm going to plant them. I've also got... Hey, did you stop picking them all stuff around everywhere? I've also got these that I planted last year. And didn't harvest them because I didn't realise they were in the bag. Um, but I thought there are seed potatoes from last year that I didn't eat. And they're sprouting again. So I'm going to put these back in as well. I think these are earlies looking at them, looking at the, the um, potato. And there's eyes coming out of them all over the place. So, do you know, I'm going to plant these as well because I don't see why I can't plant them. There's nothing wrong with them. It's only going to be what the potatoes I'm going to buy are going to do anyway. So what I thought was, start them in a pot, um, and then when I've done my raised bed, I'm going to pop them in the raised bed, you know, and I'm going to see how they get on. Just as an experiment, really, because I'll harvest these in May, um, and eat them in May, and then the bed will be clear then for when the tomatoes go in. So it just means I've got something growing in the polytunnel. So I've got a few bags um, that I used last year, and I'm going to do the same method I did last year. The reason I've got these is because I harvested the leaf compost out of the bag to start my seeds. And I didn't realise these were in the bag, I'd completely forgotten. So I'm going to do it again and I'm going to do leaves again and put them in bags with leaves again because they did really well last year. I did get a good harvest out of them. So considering all this is free, I, was just, I just thought I might put it in the compost. I'm going to plant them, I'm going to see what they do. To see, just really to experiment how well you can grow from an old bag of potatoes that's just been sat there that I paid £3.50 for um, and see if I can get potatoes out of them so that's going to be my experiment in the polytunnel so I just thought I'd let you see them um, I can't think of anything else to show you at the moment I'm going back outside I've got jobs to do outside so if I see anything I want to show you I'll turn the camera on and let you see what we do so see you in a minute girl girls are having fun eating grass Gertie, just over here, is feeling a bit under the weather. She's had her Vetorex, so hopefully she'll be feeling a bit better soon. That in the bowl there is some mashed potato and fish, so hopefully it'll give them all a boost. Right. Right, OK, so I've got my tubs, well, my pots that I'm going to use. Uh, excuse the wind noise and the banging, but it's very windy. All of a sudden it's decided to whip up a wind again. But uh, I've just been inside and I've got the stuff that I've used for my chickens. It's in my sinus video and it's this one and it's called Vet RX, called Vetter X. Very good, clears them up straight away. Um, both Gertie and Grace were feeling rough this morning. Pippa's still feeling a bit rough. But uh, yeah, this stuff has cleaned them up straight away. So have a look at that video if you're interested in helping your chickens if they're suffering from a sinus infection. You'll know if they are because their face will all puff up all around here, around their eyes, across their beak and above their head, above their eyes. It swells up. That's a sign of a sinus infection and needs to be got straight away, otherwise you'll lose your hens. So this stuff is brilliant. I mean, mine have perked up no end straight away. Within about half an hour, they're back up as normal chickens. Anyway, back to the video. What I've got here is my windowsill propagators, which is these, have holes in the bottom so that they're good for drainage. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I've got these trays that I got from buying food off the market, vegetable uh, plants off the market. So I'm just going to use them. I've broken off the sides so that they'll fit into my tray. 
and they're just going to go in like that and then the lid will fit on top nicely like that and they can go and sit on the window sill in their tray which is one of these they don't have holes in the bottom so you can water your seeds and uh, the water won't go all over your carpets so you get three along here in a row and they're only 5 99 in home bargain so i'm going to see if i can get some more because then i can put them on all the window ledges in or in the house and get all my seeds growing nice and early so that's what i've done with that so the compost that i'm using is it's this stuff it's called coco grow and it's core compost now it's not really ideal for growing seeds in so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mix it with uh, old spent compost just to get the seeds growing um, it is peat free and it is lightweight and one box expands to 75 litres of compost and this was £5 at the end of the se summer season last year in Morrison's full price I think it was two boxes for £12 so even still it's still a good deal £6 75 litres of compost is a pretty good deal really well it was £12 for 150 litres of compost so that's that was a really good deal for me and I got three boxes of this and it worked out cheaper than three bags of compost from the animal feed shop so it was a really good bargain when I bought it so what I've done is I've put it to soak in water because you have to add water um, in order to uh, get the compost to expand into usable compost because it's just a block and this is what it looks like it comes in a big block this is some of it that's left that hasn't uh, condensed down um, with the water because I haven't put enough water in so I'm going to need to put more water in with my seeds into my compost so this is my compost mix it's the leaf mulch compost out of my potato bags from last summer um, I did a video about growing potatoes in leaves it was a mixed result but the compost is beautiful this is the compost I've got uh, from those leaves. It's a brilliant compost. It's broken down lovely. Um, so this is going to go here on my border here. So this is the compost that we're going to use. Nice. Okay. So we're all set up. We've got our compost, got our seeds, got our seed trays and we're ready to go. So this is the first of the sowings for the Victory Garden. And the first one I'm going to do is broad beans. Now I don't think I'm going to do all of them because there's about 20 in each bag so I'm going to do this one crimson flowered and I'm going to do this one aqua dulce or whatever it's called. So we're going to do a few of each and we're going to do probably six in each tray and that will give us 12 and then next month excuse me next month I'll do some more because it says that you can direct sow outside until April. So we'll do some now and then we'll do some more in a couple of weeks time. This one is to sow indoors until March. So we're all right, we're gonna do 12, six of each in our tray. Sorry about the wind noise. For some reason it's decided to go really noisy. Wasn't supposed to be windy today. No one told the weather that. Now I'm doing these indoors because I don't want the mice being able to get in and eat my seeds because they stripped me of the lot last year. So I'm going to do six of this one. What I might do is I might soak the others, but these I'm just going to direct sow them. Because last year I had mixed results. I uh, so soaked them and sown them. They didn't grow. I think I soaked them for too long and left them out for too long. So yeah, that's one loss. So I'm going to soak them, do them separately. Right, so that's that. I just get my label. I think the chickens want to go to bed. Do you want to make sure you label things so you know what you've sown? And I'm going to put the date on just so I know when I've sown them. Now broad beans were great um, during the war. Everybody seemed to grow them because they grew well and you could dry them. Right, so that's them. So I'll take them in, I'll give them a water. So you want to put your lid on. 
keep the mice out and there's one done right so that's them done so they can go away I need to find my labels I have got more so I'll just do another one and then that'll be one tray done today I think I'll do some beetroot two different types of beetroot well I've got three actually yeah I think I'll do some beetroot we'll see how we get on right so this one I'm just going to put it straight into the tray like that right I think I'll do this one as a rainbow They just mixed in the packet. This was the packet that I got from uh, Home Bargain last year for 99p. I'm going to get myself another packet this year. You get quite a few seeds in a packet. And you can, you can sow them quite thickly. And again, put the date. And then you'll know then, say in 21 days, if they haven't grown, to sow some more because they're not going to grow. That's basically my philosophy anyway. If you're looking for a good channel to watch, the Grow Veg YouTube channel is a great channel. And Hugh Richards as well, if you don't watch him, on being self-sufficient if you've got small spaces um, and you want to grow a lot of your own food. I've been watching them lately. They're great channels. I'll put links in the description bar for you. So that's my one tray done. Because in the other tray third one I've been doing this and I've been potting on my um, kitchen scraps to see if I can get them to grow don't know if they will but they look like they were wanting to this one here is looking like it wants to and the um, parsnip does and I want to harvest the greens it's just an experiment they might grow they might not grow if they don't I've lost nothing that's one tray now this tray is going to be leeks. In fact, I think I'm going to do these onions. They're very old seed. It said it should have been uh, sown by 2012. So let's see what we get, shall we? They're only very fine. There you go. These are Johnson's seeds from Wilkinson's. I'm going to sow them quite thickly because then they can be thinned out. So that's one. And as I say, everyone on the allotment used to rave about sowing onion seeds. So let's see if we get anything, shall we? Look at these as well. These are the ones that I've never sown. These should have been sown in 2005. So these were one of the first packets of seeds I ever bought. They've never been opened. So let's see what these do, shall we? They look all right. Don't look any worse for it. Probably have far too many onions, but who cares? I have to sort myself out and find my labels. Got loads somewhere. Where uh, Bedford? Right, these ones are gonna have. This one's gonna have some more root uh, beetroot. The orange beetroot, it's old seed, needs using. Good chance to see if it'll grow, it's this one. But the great thing is, you can use it as a label. And this one's Gordon's, this is Boltardy, just throwing it all over the table. I just don't want to see old seed go to waste. Nearly time for them to go in. Right, we'll do one more. I think I'm going to do my leeks. That's rocket. Yeah, I think I'm going to do my leeks. There's a lot of my seeds really old. I have got another pack, which I bought last year. But this one needs to be sown by last year. And this is Leon. This one here. I'm just going to sew it all 
the guys on the allotment always used to say that it was better to have too many leeks than not enough because you can you can sow them and harvest them while they're young right so we've got a head start again just going to use my label and that's two trays done right so that didn't take me any time at all really i've got a uh, six trays ready there you go so they just need watering and uh, we've got a head start on our victory garden so even if you've only got a small patch do some window boxes um just to get stuff growing just to get things started um plan window boxes i mean you can grow leeks in window boxes you can grow beetroot you can grow lettuce and um, you can grow kale you can grow carrots so there's always plenty that you can do in pots you can do courgettes you can do tomatoes you can do cucumbers so you don't even have to have a garden to have a victory garden you can even have a patio i'm going to grow stuff on my patio around the side of the house and we'll do that as a video um, i had to move all my fruit that i had around there i did a fruit video last spring put it in the i button for you about starting a patio fruit orchard patio fruit garden I had to move it all because i had to move all the wood from the front of the house but it's all going to be going back once the wood's been split and uh, yeah i'll show you uh, putting the food in around the side of the house so you can see you can even have a victory garden with no garden and just do it all in tubs and pots you can put them around the front garden put them around the back garden and grow your own food you don't even have to have a garden so i think that's it for me for today it's going dark it's getting cold the chickens are waiting to go to bed and uh, i need to go in and do the tea so i'll see you in the next video enjoy the rest of your week enjoy the rest of your weekend and i will see you soon so take care bye for now bye bye